In the last video, we took a look at how the light reflects from a plane mirror or a flat mirror. Today, we're going to look at how light reflects from curved mirrors. So a mirror could curve in one of two ways. It can either kind of bulge outwards like so. And in that case, we call this a convex mirror. The light would be coming in from this direction. It's given another name as well. It's also called a diverging mirror. When things diverge, they get farther apart. So if we consider the rays striking a convex mirror, this ray here, it would, be, it would reflect in approximately this direction. And this ray here would reflect in approximately this direction. So we can see that these two reflected rays are diverging. They're getting farther and farther apart. A common use for a convex or diverging mirror is in store security. So if you go into a shopper's drug mart and you look at the back wall, there'll be a big convex mirror there. And the employees look at that and they can kind of see the entire panorama of the store back here. And that makes it easier to detect shoplifters, etc. So a common use would be in security. Now if the mirror should bend the other way, so it kind of curves inwards like that, you've got the light coming in from this side, then you have kind of a cave shape here. So this is what's called a concave mirror. It's also called a converging mirror because when things converge, they get closer together. And that's what the reflected rays do when they hit a concave mirror. So if I've got two rays coming in, this first one would reflect something like that. Second one would reflect something like that. So you can see the two reflected rays here are getting closer together, or they're converging. So we have two names for this, concave or converging. The uses of the converging mirror, first use is as a makeup mirror here, or a shaving mirror. If you want to look at the pores on your face and the little blemishes on your face, put your face very close to the mirror and you'll get an enlarged image from that converging mirror. Another use is with headlamps headlamps for cars say. There's a bulb inside the headlamp. It is going to produce light in all directions, but if you put a concave mirror in behind it, it's going to make those reflected beams converge and produce a beam. So if you've got one of those little flashlights or you've got a car headlamp, they're going to use a concave or converging mirror. What we want to do now is learn the skill of doing a ray diagram. A ray diagrams can allow us to predict what type of an image we're going to get under different conditions. So we're looking at curved mirrors. Let's assume that our curved mirror has a circular shape. Of course, we don't want the front of the sphere here, so I'm going to erase that. And now we've got a spherically curved concave mirror. And this C here is, is the center of that original sphere. It's called the center of curvature. This line coming across, which goes through the center of the sphere, is called the principal axis. And we're imagining this point here to be a source of light. And you'll remember that a source of light produces light rays in all directions, including coming out of the page and into the page. And what we want to do with all those rays coming out is pick some nice simple ones. And probably the most simple one that we could talk about would be one that is straight along the principal axis. It's parallel to the principal axis. Now I'm going to draw a dotted line here going from the center of curvature to that point of contact. And now I'm going to apply the law of reflection the law of reflection says that this angle here has to be equal to this angle here 
when it reflects off the mirror. So our reflected ray should be about like so. And you'll notice here that that reflected ray crosses the principal axis halfway between the center of curvature and where the mirror meets the principal axis. So these two lengths here are the same. And we call that length the focal length. So often we'll denote this point here as being F for the focal point. Now if I was to take some other source of light and draw a line, draw a ray, parallel to the principal axis, and once again applying the law of reflection, and you should find that if I make these two angles the same, the reflected ray goes through that focal point again. So we end up with a general rule here. If we've got a curved mirror, if a ray is parallel to the principal axis, then it will reflect through the focal point. We can come up with another very simple rule for these ray diagrams if we imagine our source being at the other end of the ray. So now the light ray is going in the opposite direction. It's going towards the mirror here and away from the mirror over here. And then of course we've just got to reverse the process because we've got to apply the law of reflection again. So our second rule becomes if a ray passes through the, and I don't have it on this diagram, but if it passes through the focal point here, it will reflect parallel to the principal axis. And we can obtain a third rule for these rays if we imagine our source here such that we've got a ray that's passing through the center of curvature. Because if the ray passes through that center of curvature, so it would be going in this direction, then it's going to hit a perpendicular surface right here and it's going to bounce straight back. So our third rule, if a ray passes through the center of curvature, the reflected ray will reflect straight back through the center of curvature. So let's try to do our first ray diagram. And what we want to do with the ray diagram is we have an object right here and we want to locate where is the image going to be for that object given this mirror here? And then once we get that image, we'd like to characterize the image. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So remember, there's rays coming out in all directions. We choose those three simple rays. In fact, we only need two, but I've drawn all three of them. So one of the rays is parallel to the principal axis. One of the rays goes through the focal point, And one of the rays goes through the center of curvature. And then our rules where the one that goes parallel to the principal axis should reflect through the focal point. The one that goes through the focal point should reflect parallel to the principal axis. And the one that goes through the center of curvature should reflect straight back through the center of curvature. And you can see now that those three reflected rays are going to meet at a point right here. So if we were to place, say, a screen right here, a little piece of paper would do as a screen, that bright point from the candle would show up right here. Now, we could also imagine the bottom of the candle. Maybe it's got a 
where would the bottom of the candle show up in the image? Well, if I take a ray from the bottom, it's right along the principal axis. So it's going to pass through C and reflect straight back, which means the bottom of the candle has to be along the principal axis. And that'll always be true. If we have an object, anything along the principal axis will show up in the image along the principal axis. So our candle on our piece of paper here is going to show up as an image right here. There's the flame and there's the candle. And then what we typically do now is we characterize that image. And we characterize that image using an acronym. The acronym is SALT. S stands for the size of the image, A stands for the attitude of the image, L is for location, and T is for type. So let's characterize this image. The size, well we can see that this image is smaller than the object. So we say it was smaller. Attitude, it's only two possible attitudes, upright or inverted. And we can see that this candle here is upside down compared to this candle here. So we would say that the attitude is inverted. Next is location. Well, our image is in front of the mirror between C and F. So it's on the same side. The image is on the same side of the mirror as the object. And finally, we characterize it according to type. And there's only two types of image. An image can either be real or virtual. And we have real rays intersecting here. So this will be a real image. You'll recall in a plane mirror, we got an image behind the mirror. And there's no real rays of light there. So in a plane mirror, you always get a virtual image and not a real image. When we place the screen here, real light can show up on that screen and you can see that image. Let's try another ray diagram. Once again for a concave mirror, but this time we're going to place our object in front of the focal point rather than behind the center of curvature. So our first rule was that if the ray goes parallel to the principal axis, it should reflect through the focal point. Our second rule was that if a ray passes through the focal point, it will reflect parallel to the principal axis. However, if we go in this direction, we'll never reflect off ever anything. So we've got to kind of imagine a ray that originates from the focal point and then passes through the tip of our object, like so. So the ray would be from here to here, but it's, but in a sense it's passing through the focal point if we could kind of run it backwards. And here's our reflected ray, and it's parallel to the principal axis. And the third ray that we could draw would be would be a ray that goes in about this direction such that it is in a sense coming from the cent center of curvature. In other words, if I draw a line like so, then my ray coming from the object would pass through the center of curvature if we cannot work it backwards. And the reflected ray is supposed to go straight back. So you'll notice that these three reflected rays are diverging. They're getting farther apart back here. So if we've got an eyeball over here, that's a badly drawn eyeball, but we can imagine those rays hitting the eyeball here, and of course the brain is going to reconstruct, and I'll use a dotted line here, so that line would go straight across, and I'll take this line as well, it should go and meet about here. This one should meet at the same place as well. So you notice they're all kind of 
meeting at that same point. And this would be our image. The tip of the candle, the tip of the arrow, that point shows up right here when the brain reconstructs the image. So we get an image over here, and if we classify this image according to salt, then the size, of course, is larger. It's magnified. The attitude is upright. It's in the same direction as the original arrow. Its location is behind the mirror. And its type would be virtual. That's because there's no real light back here. We drew dotted lines. There's no real light coming from here into the eyeball. The, eye, the light is coming from here, reflecting and going into the light into the eyeball. So it's a virtual image. So we get an enlarged virtual image when the object is close to the mirror. We might ask the question, what happens if we slowly move our object back as it goes through the focal point, travels between the focal point and the center of curvature, and then makes its way back? We know we're going to start with an enlarged virtual image, and we're going to end with a small real image in front of the mirror. So let's see what happens as we take our object and we move it back beyond the focal point and beyond the center of curvature. So right now, the object is close to the concave mirror and we're getting an enlarged virtual image behind the mirror. And as we pull the object back towards the focal point, you'll see the image is getting larger and larger. Now it's right off the page, still getting larger and larger and getting farther and farther behind the mirror itself and it would be at infinity once we got the object to the focus point. In other words, you're not going to get any image when you're at the focal point. Then we could continue to move our object backwards and now you can see the image forming here. You can see that it's enlarged. It's a real image this time because we have real reflected rays meeting at this point. And as we pull the object backwards, you can see that the image is getting smaller. So it's inverted and it's real. And we can keep doing that. When we get right to the center of curvature, you'll notice that the image and the object are exactly the same size. They're inverted, one relative to the other. And they're both located at the center of curvature. And then as we pull back farther, you can see that the image is now smaller than the original. It's still real. It's inverted. And it's located between the focal point and the center of curvature. This is Dr. Boyd Edwards and he's going to show you what happens as you move away from a concave mirror. So right now you can see the image is enlarged and it's kind of moving backwards. It's getting bigger as he approaches the focal point. And now it's just kind of going crazy. It's at this point getting pretty much infinitely large. You notice there it flipped upside down, so that's where he just passed the focal point. The image is inverted now and enlarged, and he's moving towards the center of curvature. Continues to move backwards. And as he continues to move backwards, that image should get smaller and smaller. And now when he's at the center of curvature, the image and the object should be the same size. Now he's going back beyond the center of curvature, so the image is getting smaller and smaller. Now I'm going to go a little bit faster as I show you the ray diagram for a convex mirror. The rules, though, are basically the same. If we direct a ray parallel to the principal axis, it's going to reflect in approximately this direction. And the exact direction will be as if it passed through the focal point here. So our 
incident ray parallel to the principal axis is this one and our reflected ray as if coming from that focal point is this one a second ray would be one that heads directly towards the focal point and it should be such that it will reflect in this direction which is parallel to the principal axis so the ray headed in this direction towards the focal point and then it reflected parallel to the principal axis like that so we end up with these two green rays that are the reflected ray and if we have an eyeball back here those diverging rays hitting the eyeball are going to be reconstructed as if both rays were coming in a straight line so let's extend these lines back here and here so the tip of the arrow here is going to be imaged right here so our image arrow is going to look like so so in terms of salt our size here is smaller our attitude is upright our location is going to be behind the mirror and of course there's no real light behind the mirror so this has to be a virtual image so on our simulation this time the object is over here on the right side of this convex mirror here's the image over here and as we move our object back you notice the image doesn't move much it's getting a little bit smaller and as we move things up the image gets larger it's always virtual and until you get pretty much right up to the mirror it's always a little bit smaller than the actual object okay let's try to summarize the big ideas from the video uh, number one I would say would be the idea of rays that get closer together are called converging rays if two people's ideas are getting closer together we'd say that their ideas are converging likewise for rays if the rays are getting farther apart we would say that they are diverging so if we've got a concave then the rays will come in and they will reflect so they get closer together so a concave mirror is a converging mirror and a convex mirror which makes the reflected rays get farther apart is called a diverging mirror then we started doing these ray diagrams and we needed two intersecting reflected rays to find an image point and and we had three rules that just gave us three very easy rays to draw one was that if we had a ray that was coming in parallel to the principal axis then the ray would reflect towards the focal point or from the focal point in the case of a convex lens our second rule was that if the ray went towards the focal point then it would reflect parallel to the principal axis and our third rule was if the ray went through C then it would bounce back through C as well in other words it would bounce straight back once we located that image point we could characterize the image using salt where S was the size A was the attitude L was the location and T was the type either virtual or real and that would depend on whether there was real reflected rays intersecting or whether our brain was kind of reconstructing where those rays came from if they had come in a straight line and the fourth thing we did was we kind of looked at how the image changed as we moved an object towards 
a concave mirror and then a convex mirror. So for the uh, concave mirror, if this is our focal point, then if we were in here, we'd the mirror would act like a makeup mirror. We'd get that enlarged virtual image. So if we were inside the focal point, we'd get an image over here. And then right at f, no image was formed because this became infinitely large. And then once you got past f here, the image became inverted. And if the object were right at c, then the image would also be right at c and it'd be inverted and a real image. And then as you moved back, if your object were back here, you'd get a smaller image in between C and F, and it would be a real image and inverted. The convex mirror was simpler. It always gave a virtual image in behind the mirror here and it would be smaller than the original image. So this is going to work as a like a security mirror. And as you bring the object right up to the mirror itself then you'd get an image that was the same size. So of course as we bring our object up to the mirror this image gets bigger and bigger. And that's all for today folks. Thank you very much.